So, you've got a new fountain pen. Yay! Whether it's your first pen or your 84th pen, the basics of getting started are generally the same. Hi, my name is Drew Brown from the Goulet Pen Company, and today I'm going to share with you five things you should always be doing when you get started with a brand new fountain pen. Number one, know what a fountain pen is. I know that might sound uber basic, but before you get started, you should at least know what a fountain pen is, its basic functions and parts, and how it's different than a rollerball or a ballpoint, like actually being fun to use. If you need any help here, we've got a bunch of great resources that can help you out. Number two, unbox your pen. Pens usually come in a box. There's often an outer box or a sleeve that's meant to protect the pen and an inner box that is meant for, you know, more or less display purposes. The outer box, can most certainly have signs of wear. That is normal. Some pens might not come in a box at all. They can either come loose in a little plastic sleeve or in a little disposable box. You can just toss those boxes away. Step three, inspect your pen. First things first, make sure it is in fact what you intended to order. Make sure it's the right color. Make sure it's the right nib size. You don't want to end up inking it up and then after the fact find out, this isn't even what I ordered. Handle the pen. Make sure it feels good to you. Make sure it feels good in your hand, the grip especially. Post it, unpost it, check the balance, the feel. This is what you're gonna be writing with for a while and you want to make sure that your hand's gonna be happy with it. Also, while you're inspecting, keep an eye out for any defects. Accidents do happen, they're not common, but now is the time to catch them. Look for any damage, scratches, cracks, things, especially any damage to the nib. That would not be good. One thing you should also do is dry write with the nib. That means just kind of drag it across the paper without any ink. Obviously, once it's inked up, it's going to be much more smooth, but even a dry nib shouldn't be, you know, ripping up paper. Don't push hard, but you know, you know, drag it across the paper, make sure it's not destroying your paper. You'll also want to inspect the inside of the barrel. With a demonstrator, we're not gonna see any surprises in there, but every now and then you might have an opaque pen that has something in it. If you go to install a converter or something and it's just not fitting, it could be because you've got a cartridge in there that was already installed in the back of the barrel, just flopping around in there. You could also give it a little shake to make sure there's nothing in there, but sometimes you could go to install something in a pen that has a cartridge just kind of stored in the barrel and end up shoving that cartridge all the way back into the barrel and then it gets stuck and it's such a bear to get out. You don't wanna have that happen. So make sure there's nothing hiding in the barrel. Now is the best time to return your pen if for any reason you are not happy with it. From this point on, things are gonna get inky, and I guarantee you it's a lot easier and less complicated to initiate a return with an uninked pen versus an inked pen. Step four, clean your pen. What we're going to do now is simply get water through the main part of your pen, the grip section. And to do that, you can either utilize the internal filling method, in this case it's a converter, but you could also have an internal piston filler, or a bulb syringe full of water. We sell both of these, a converter or a bulb syringe at our store. We will go ahead and just draw ink up into the internal filling mechanism. As you can see, this pen already has ink in it because Lamy actually tests theirs at the factory and eject that. So we're going to just utilize this method to get a blank slate clean start on our new fountain pen. So we know there's not any other ink or any residual machining oils. We don't have time for that. We don't want that variable in our situation, right? The bulb syringe is absolutely my favorite method. It will get your pen flushed really well and really, really quickly. After you're done cleaning, blot your nib and your feed with a paper towel so that we can have a nice dry start when we go to ink things up. Step five, ink up your pen. Using the grip section, you can either plug in a converter or a cartridge and get ready to go. If you're using a cartridge, the ink is gonna take a little bit longer to get from the cartridge to the nib, just stick with it. You can squeeze it a little bit to kind of prime it but also keep in mind, if your feed and nib are a little wet from our cleaning earlier, you'll see that the ink is a little watered down for a while. That's totally normal. Just keep writing, it'll go away. If you're using a cartridge converter, you will need to plug that up, and then we will draw ink up into the reservoir. 
just submerge the nib all the way down into your fake ink, which is just a little bit of ink mixed with water in this case, and twist the piston until you get a nice full fill, like that. Before you start writing, you'll need to get your paper towel again and blot any excess ink from the nib and the feed. Um, otherwise, you'll be writing and it'll look like, Dear Drew, thank you so much for this video. My new pen is... <laughs> That's the sound of an oversaturated feed or an ink burp. Next, you want to put your pen back together and enjoy your new writing adventure. Then you want to love it so much you buy another one. Subscribe to Goulet Pen's YouTube channel for more inky fun. Uh, we also have a weekly pen show if you're really into that. You could also choose to go, go to GouletPens.com for more shopping adventures or to buy some fun ink samples. And then finally, you might also want to penable a friend. But most importantly, have fun. Right on.